We knew about the baby. We knew it. We predicted it. Yeah. And nobody should be dis uh, surprised. Okay. Do you know what would be really gross? I feel bad for thinking this. But, like, what if he had several babies? Like... Yeah, if the, <laughs> if the guy's entire um, strategy was to just... Uh, get with as many ladies as you possibly could. Yeah, that'd be a problem. Okay, I think I'm gonna get rid of flash fire. But I mean, uh. Why do we get rid of rhyme spike? Though, it's interesting. Rhyme spike for this because he probably chose the person. I mean, she chose willingly. It seems. Yep. It wasn't like he was scum oh. like earlier, but what she's in disfavor. Oh, she guard? changed her equipment. Block it. Oh, yeah. I Blocking guess. the doorway, Amelia regards you with eyes that brim with tears, yet blaze with hints of her father's grim resolve. She has armored herself in disfavored raiment to face you down. Stay away from my daughter. You will not have her. Oh no. Oh, by the Archon's mercy. Don't let this be so. Barrett covers his face and howls softly. Your daughter is the Regent's heir. Now that you've killed Stratus Harrodin, she is. Emilia draws herself up and glares at you. She has nothing to do with Kairos or the Edict. You have no right to judge her on the basis of blood. How is did this... you know this oh. would prolong the edict? Yeah, did you know this would prolong the edict? We suspected that the bloodline would implicate my baby in Kairos' eyes, but I knew nothing for certain until this moment. She shakes her head. Don't ask me to interpret the Overlord's heartless design. I have no love for this edict, if that's what you're asking. It's torn a normal, un noble realm to pieces. Fractured the pillar of their culture and ruined countless lives. She releases a heavy sigh and hardens her intense gaze. But I have a responsibility to the people of Stalwart to preserve their heritage and leadership. My father and the other Archons destroyed this nation. She and I... Amelia glances back at the crib, then quickly focuses back on you. We can help put it together. What a naive notion. I thought better of you, but this shows nothing but contempt for all that the disfavored accomplished and sacrificed in this conquest. Demetrius shakes his head w with disapproval. How is this possible? Uh, do you need me to draw it out for you? Because there are a few ways it can happen. And people get confused about these things. First, Verse lifts her leg above her head, but you cut her off with a gesture? What? She's actually gonna... Apparently so. Uh... Uh, my... My union with Stratus the Younger. Even in remembrance, Amelia doesn't shed her warlike resolve. He showed me kindness, kindness behind these walls. And taught me about Stalwart and the Tears. The culture and the heritage that made these people the pride of the realm. He died in the third year of the conquest. A disfavored spear pinned him to the ground, and he fought to defend, and he never rose again. Whoa, wait, so that old man is actually the grandfather. Yeah, yeah, her father-in-law. Oh, I see. The regent remained in Sentinel Stand for her protection. The edict was his responsibility to shoulder, not hers. She tips her head down in challenge. My daughter will not be another victim of Kairos' conquest. She is the blood of the North coursing through her veins. And no one has the right to take her life. Calm yourself, Amelia. There must be another way. All the other ones are kind of yeah. bad. Another way! Demetrius shakes his head in sadness. Amelia turned her back on the Legion. The general has no place for the disloyal, no matter whose blood flows in their veins. All the same... If you can guarantee my daughter's life, I will return to Ash and submit to his judgment, she frowns, harsh as it will be. But that still leaves us with the matter of the Edict. What could we possibly do about the Edict of Storms? 
Regent blood flows through my daughter's veins. Hey! Abdicate. <laughs> All that lore comes in handy. All right. Uh, so per perhaps there's a way to circumvent Kairos' law. I must research the matter. You make a good point. It's entirely hopeless. Child dies. Or lore 69. Abdicate your line. As regent mother, you have the authority. You must merely say the words. Sure. It means lore. Oh, quite right. Lantry picks it. Uh, licks the tip of his quill as he flips his parchment. And since the regent mother isn't of stalwart and can't actually sit as regent that should, I hope, terminate the line. I ought to... I ought not to show preference for how this part of the chronicle unfolds, but eh, I'd rather title this chapter Legal Remedy than Infant Regicide, if given the choice. Hope reflects in her expression for the first time. Is it truly as simple as that? Clerical formality to spare an innocent life? She huffs as much in surprise as derision. Uh, if this works, I'll owe you more than I can possibly repay. Here, the edict damaged this trinket, but you might still find it useful. I, Amelia, formally abdicate my daughter's claim to the Regency of Stalwart, dissolving all ties, compacts, vassals, and holdings. We forfeit all protections and advantages given by the ancient bloodline. She pauses. Uh, was that enough? Uh, fool? You ask as if it has never happened before. The only thing I can guarantee is what happens next if it doesn't work. You feel a familiar sensation, the air growing hot and electric, before suddenly erupting in overwhelming waves of energy. <laughs> like how we had to get in position. <laughs> At first, you think the force of arcane power dissipating is enough to carve the skin from your bones, a sensation you would attribute to the Edict of Storms, but it cools just as quickly. I look at how everybody had to get in position instead of just me. Wah. Bobbly goodness! <laughs> <laughs> the winds buffeting the keep have abated. Outside, an eerie silence. <laughs> ah pervades the air, a stillness that hasn't visited Stalwart for a long time. You can hear the very symbols that brought the Edict of Storm into being, each, oh, yeah, each syllable proclaiming itself from a newfound corner of your mind. It would seem the Edict is now a part of you. Uh, thank goodness, it worked. You spared my daughter. And here I had come to expect nothing but cruelty from the servants of Kairos. Amelia looks to the crib. Now we have a chance that might never, uh, have been. A life outside these walls. My father can be severe and uncompromising, but I'll return to Ironhearth and his protection, at least while the conflict persists. Hopefully he isn't so consumed by war that I can't still appeal to him as a man and father. I always appreciated them more than the Archon. I regret none of the decisions I made to get here. We'll disagree on that much, but my daughter will be safe. The stalemate between the unbroken and the disfavored is at an end. A victory that can't be measured in rings. Thank you, Fatebinder. I'll remain at Sentinel Stand to secure this location and send word to Ash of your excellent work. Alright, time to go loot the baby. The crib has been meticulously cleaned. While the other objects in the hall have traces of dust and metallic powder on them, none of that is found here. Also... Aha! Royal jewels! Nothing? Alright. I guess okay. let's go talk to Graven Ash. Yeah, let's see what happens. That was easy. I was expecting a little bit more inside the keep, but it turns out the keep itself is just like one room. Go figure, everybody hated it here. <laughs> The keep is safe in our hands. Repairs are already underway. So what, is it just showing how it's another bastion? Ash will want to hear about what we've accomplished here. I'll hang back and oversee repairs of the defenses. Okay, I wanted to check something with our character. I really like this cello the cello music. Courage. I should stop singing along with it. <laughs> huh. 
What's up? Uh... So, hey, you actually got some favor with the whatevers. Yeah, with the unbroken? Yep. Not that it matters oh, anymore. Oh, interesting. I can, I can change my por portrait whenever I want. That's interesting, but I still don't think anyone else has a beard. Yeah, there's like this guy and this guy. A mustache man. And this guy. I mean, technically, this guy's beard and hair are a little bit closer to reality, but the skin color is... Yeah, I don't like doing that in games. I mean, we could go with, like, this. You mean having a portrait that looks so dissimilar to your main character? Well, part of it is I'm actually tempted to switch to this one, even though it doesn't look like my character. Just because of the hood? No, because I'm looking the other direction and it's a cool color. It'll make it a little bit easier to pick my character out from the lineup. But, ugh. Yeah, that looks stupid. He looks like <laughs> that a That looks rogue. really stupid. All right, back to this guy. I mean, we could also do that. But what's the full portrait? Uh, no, banner. Uh. He just looks like some kind of scholarly dude. Yeah, close enough. Works for my character. Look, we didn't have the... I. Uh, whatever. All right, so we have journal making a stand. I mean, you are a scholar. Yeah. All right. Okay. Ash's daughter colluded with the unbroken region, producing an heir. Oh, uh, so that's considered a tick against Ash. Really? Uh, kind of, yeah. I guess. Why? Well, I mean, it makes sense. It was part of the unbroken, sort of. Anyway, we have Max out wrath with the unbroken, but her favor is actually kind of going up a little bit. Oh, yeah, they were really happy. Not because we uh, saved the daughter, but mainly just because we ended it. And we killed Malice. Oh, here we go. Oh, huh. Who's writing this? Tunon. Oh, no, no Meothis. Yeah. Tunon favor one. Dear dude, based on what you've told me, it seems a stretch to believe these events are mere coincidence or circumstance. Kairos' edict of execution was a setup for someone to claim Ascension Hall. To think that Kairos did not know what would happen is a massive underestimation of the Overlord's long view. You have been thrust into the arena of the mighty. Your options are retreat into obscurity, suicide, or rising to the occasion. I suggest the third option. If I were you, I would use my connection to the Spires to see if they will all awaken to my presence. Every tearsman sees the spires in the horizon. If they know you are the master of the spires, they will see you each time they look to the sunrise or sunset. Foster reputation for power. Make others fear you. This is what I've seen Kairos and every living Archon do for as long as I've lived, and there's reasons for this. There's the practical case that power and a reputation insulate you from threats. But there's the lesser-known elements that I can't prove, but I know in my heart to be true. The fear and love of others will strengthen your magic. Why? If I put my cursor, why does it highlight... Whatever, that's it, weird. It Hyros is Kairos in the paragraph. Right. But that's interesting. So the fear and love of others will strengthen your magic. It's sort of like, you know, believing in a god gives them exactly. power yeah. in magic. This last part I've inferred from my discussions with Bleeden Mark... In the few times he has spoken of his gruesome work of slaying those who might rise to threaten the Overlord, he's hinted that it's easier to kill the rogue elements before they become famed and fearsome. In my lifetime, I saw Graven Ash change from an unknown militiaman to a fearsome general. And I can assure you, he did not have the power to shield his warriors in those days as when he did, oh, when he has without title or reputation. The Archons will never, ever discuss the origin of their power, because such knowledge might be used against them. But I have known all the Archons to be obsessed with the presentation of power. Your connection to the Spires will all but guarantee the Archons will want to control and destroy you. It's a question of if, not when. Wait, that doesn't make sense. I'll guarantee the Archons will want to control and destroy you. It's not, it's a question of if not when. No, it should be, it's a question of. When, not when, if. Not, yeah. Oh, well. 
Uh, whatever. Start thinking and acting like an Archon. As far as I'm concerned, you are an Archon. An Archon of the Spires. We are quick to place labels on powers we easily spot, and history is replete with Archons of Fire and Ice. It is foolish to think that there must be a word for a thing before an Archon can control it. Other way around, the Archons show us what is possible, and we must step up to their dance. Meothis. Uh, Inquire about Glean and Mark's okay, killings. Okay, sure. Really? Or what is it? Yeah, I'm down with it. Dear Meothis, your wisdom on the matter is greatly appreciated. You made mention of Bleeding Mark and his killings. During my training, Fatebinder Calio hinted that much of Bleeding Mark's work involves killing off threats before they blossom into genuine problems. So it's curious to hear that you second that fact. So let's say for the sake of argument, I am some Archon. Is it just a matter of time until Bleeding Mark is sent to kill me? Should I be making grand displays of loyalty to the court to assuage his suspicions, dude? Mm-hmm. Alright. I really like the missive system in this game. Pigeon. <laughs> well, actually, don't make notes. Woo! Man, that just reminds me of the pigeons in Croatia. <laughs> How derpy they were. Well, pigeons are derpy. Well, no, it was all the males. The males were so horny, they were just booping around with their neck frill. Booping. <laughs> were they bopping too? <laughs> All I know is they were doing their funny little dances with their neck plumage all uh, fluffed up and they're hmm. all over. And the females were like, what? Get away from me, man. And then they would flap off. And then the guy, would, did you ever see the males afterwards when they were rejected? How nope. their plumage would just flatten a little? And then they'd find someone else to pursue? I... I didn't watch pigeons trying to mate too much. It's not exactly a Whenever we hobby. sat down somewhere to eat ice cream, that's all we saw. The pigeons on the streets. I guess. I was usually looking at the scenery of the architecture. Or the people. It was but, really fun watching the people do things around there. But the pigeons on the streets. Well, I, I focus on pigeons, cats, lizards. Yeah, people don't matter to you. I get it. Ah. <gasps> <sighs> <sighs> uh. All right. Hey, Ash, we found your daughter and your granddaughter. It's a good thing that she actually fell in love with the dude's son as opposed yeah. to him. I thought for a long time that it was the other way around, but yep. Well, oh, hi. There's a bunch more now. What's up? The Great Keep of Sentinel Stand is ours. Oh, how I relish tearing down every vestige of unbroken and burying the standard of that corrupt realm. This is a great fa uh, victory for the disfavored. What's more, we are delivered from the Edict of Storms. My runners speak of you in glowing terms, I'm although I instructed them specifically not to report on your deeds in too much detail. I wanted to hear it from no one but the source. He really doesn't want your the guys blabbing to people about how uh, awesome you are. I would know more about how it felt to stand at the center of the storm as the Overlord's magic dissolved around you. You must be weary from your travels. I am eager to hear your account, but I will understand if you need to gather your thoughts. This is a joyous day, and I wouldn't spoil it with impatience. Let's do talk about Amelia. Okay. Uh, let's talk about Amelia. You have seen her restored to my keeping. She is safe in Iron Hearth, and in spite of myself, I am pleased to have her home. He nods and releases a heavy sigh. The tension in his shoulders lifts, if only for a moment. She is taken to her quarters and speaks not of what transpired during her long imprisonment. I have instructed her guard to offer space to rest and regain her strength, but so far she keeps to herself. She has not sought her father's counsel, either. He frowns at this, deep in thought. Say what you would, then. Oh, so she hasn't revealed the daughter. Shall we start with number four? Uh, yeah, because get, saying any of the other things would rat her out. Yep. She returned to Iron Hearth. Have you not spoken? Not but a short greeting. She took her meager belongings and fled to the castle with instruction that she is not to be disturbed. She looked well enough. Her armor was in decent repair, and she only had a bundle of clothes salvaged from the keep. Later, she summoned a trusted camp healer. 
who reported her condition as fair. The Archon's eyes widen, his face taking on a deathly pallor. I... I cannot. Ash's eye, Ash squeezes his eyes shut, and he shakes his head vigorously. No, no, no. The very I idea repulses me beyond all measure. Wait, but you didn't say anything. Nope, I didn't. You, you didn't say anything about the baby. Why is he reacting like you just told him about the baby? I think he just realized. Wait, did did the healer be like, uh, um, yeah, my, uh, my doctor... Uh, yeah, I don't my know. Dr. Lee Ways figured out she had a baby. Look at those stretch marks on her stomach. I don't know. What 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 informed him? I he probably sought his connection and realized there's two people. Anyway, and you fate binder, he bears down on you with madness in his eyes. If you would bring slander and atrocity to this fort, then I will instruct Tunon to strike your head from your lawful neck. Do you hear me? Whoa. He bellows with such force that Spittle wets his beard and the cohorts of the training yard turn in panic with panic in their eyes. Ash cuts off his speech and holds his rigid posture. Throughout the prolonged silence, you aren't sure if he plans on swinging his mace in a wide arc or simply exploding from the tension he fights to repress. A vein rises along the crest of his scalp and slowly recedes as Ash calms his breathing. Mm, this is not good. Whatever. I mean, uh, remember, these guys are kind of racial purity. I just going to back away and let you handle this one. Don't mind me. Speak no more of these lies. I won't have them poisoning the air of Ironhearth and the ears of my fellow countrymen. You are a fool if you think I believe such an obvious ruse. Ash regards you with uncertainty, his eyes searching for truth or contradiction. It's it's you're it's continuing your yeah. conversation like you actually had revealed the baby situation, I don't but know. you didn't. Anyway, she didn't say anything at all about her uh, situation. He f holds your gaze with a flat, even focus. Ash takes a deep breath through his nose, filling his lungs and swelling his chest until he has expanded significantly <gasps> in your vision. When he releases the breath, it comes out deflated and resigned. It's amazing to me how long it's taken some people to get the hint. Uh, don't mind me. I'll just sit back and watch this play out. By the Overlord's mercy, was there ever a father more blind than me? The bundle, the healer, the sorrowful looks worn by her attending soldiers. His gaze shifts over to one of the windows of the castle, just in time to catch a silhouette stepping back from view. Kairos' flames. I should hurl her and that accursed creature from the rampart walls. Our family name, the very north, is degraded by her lechery. Ash grabs at his face and howls into his hands. Okay, so there's the defection. Would giving her a deserving punishment comfort you, or in time you'll learn to forgive? I'm going to start with number one. Mm -hmm. I don't really give a damn about racial purity here. No, that is that is not possible, Fatebinder. When I look into her eyes, I will see only the vileness that she invited into her heart. The deception that her captors inflicted to twist my daughter into the disgrace she has become. The wretched girl is still a member of my legion, but she has broken our bond and surely, as surely as if she had killed me. I have lost my daughter, and she must learn to endure a general in her father's place. In spite of my... my temperament, you have done as I asked. Amelia is returned. The edict is ended. Perhaps I am too quick to blame you for the failings of my once noble house. What is it that you require? Oh, okay. I return from Sentinel Stand. The seat of the Regents and the tarnished gem of Stalwart. I've anticipated this. So, tell me, what do you have to report? Stratus Hirodin is dead. That is gratifying to hear. The coward spent too long crunched behind the walls of Sentinel Stand and deserved none of Kairos' mercy. The Regent family was an inbred and corrupt line of failed rulers. They had neither the courage nor the grit to lead the realm to prosperity. As they demonstrated, Stalwart is much improved by their absence. The Edict of Storms is also ended. And I have breathed fresh air for the first time since I returned to Iron Hearth. You managed to accomplish what my forces could not. More importantly, you have abated Kairos' anger for the time being. With the great stalemate of the conquest ended, surely we have earned the favor of Tunan and Kairos alike. Every deed you accomplish in the name of the disfavored proves our right to rule these lands. Ash balls a fist and enthusiastically and pumps it in the air. 
How did it feel, Fatebinder? I've not had the distinction of breaking the edict, much less several. Um. Um. Well, if you say the first one, he's gonna be like, "Oh no, he's getting that magic." Magic. Uh, I'd like number three. The toying with powers of, of which I yeah I know little. Yeah. Okay. That will make him underestimate you. Maybe. I'm toying with the powers uh, with powers of which I know little. Aren't we all? But in your case, I can respect your misgivings. The Overlord's magic is not to be meddled with lightly. Your actions at Vendrian's Well have cost, caused us all to expect more than you were ever prepared to shoulder as a legal clerk. Living up to our admittedly high expectations will do more than merely get you through this war. There are greater things to come once the dust settles. So, what are our next steps? Alright. First things first. My soldiers reported on your activities in the Blade Grave. They saw what happened when you broke the Edict of Storms. The power of this edict flowed through you like the wind. No one could account for it, but I have my suspicions. You are becoming powerful, perhaps in ways I don't even understand. So, the question is, do you tell him the truth? Do I feel like around it? I, I said this at the beginning, and every time this comes up, I okay. always pick the lore option. But the lore option is telling you I everything. want to be a turbo wizard, all right? one is like, I feel stronger, and... There is definitely a connection to the edicts. I, I feel like lore 59 is always the right way to go. It fine, solved fine, like fine, every fine, problem we've run into. Fine. So, there's a connection between the edicts and what happened at Ascension Hall. I'm still putting the pieces together. I appreciate your honesty and your introspection. Still, you walk a dangerous path. I would not want it to reflect poorly on the Legion. These are tools beyond the ken of people or Archons alike. Take care that you don't overstep your bounds. In Kairos' hierarchy, someone always notices. Well, yeah, he, he's given you a warning. Yeah, but we got lore experience. Yes. <laughs> With that out of the way, let us return to the matter of war. Our position in the tiers is strengthening by the day, and there is work still to be done. It's time to broaden our scope in this war. There are two regions of interest, and either of them would strengthen our hold on the realm. Lethian's Crossing is home to the merchants and skilled forge-bound artisans. The Burning Library was once the home of all-knowing sages <gasps> before Kairos reduced it to cinders. Ooh, well, we've already been to Lethian's Crossing. But we haven't broken the, uh... We haven't broken it or taken it. Right. We just kind of started it. But we haven't seen the library. Okay. We'll go to the library. Good. I understand the voices that the Voices Narat has dispatched one of his miscreant gangs. Oh, yeah. Good. Wait, I did understand you want that... the spire in the other... There's a spire by the yeah. library, too, isn't Yeah, because we've already been to Lethian's Crossing. Mm -hmm. This is the other good thing, so... Good, I understand the Voices Narat has also dispatched one of his miscreant gangs to comb through the runes of the library. We cannot allow any privileged knowledge to fall into their hands. Kill any of his red-clad degenerates you find, and destroy the library as Kairos intended. It was also said to be a repository of arcane lore in the bowels of the library. The Silent Archive. It must be eliminated to satisfy the terms of Kairos' will. Whoa, wait, so... Oh, the special archives have to be destroyed? Yeah. To end the edict there? Yep. I wonder if they say anything about Kairos. I don't know. We better it... read it before we destroy it. My scoutmaster, Merrick, has dispatched, uh, was dispatched to observe the Scarlet Chorus, though I haven't heard from him in some time. His last location was in the village of Effigy. The wilderness around the library is plagued with chorus patrols and wildfires that can make routes treacherous at a moment's notice. Merrick should be able to assist you in charting a safe course through that wasteland. The general worries... Oh, uh, worries his beard and frowns. I instructed Merrick to destroy all forbidden lore within the Burning Library, given the first available opportunity. The fact that the Edict of Fire persists is cause to assume that he failed. That's the one that you had started. Yep. All right. And well, do you want, to, do you want to ask him more questions? or well, is he not? Ask gonna... this. No. Um. It's the same thing. Well, goodbye. Alright, so we're done well, with making a stand. Meosis, or whatever her name is. Myth yeah. She already said that the people seem to gain power from what they do the most. It's sort of like skills in this game. Yep. I mean, if you notice, uh, here, let's go back to my new portrait that's Sphere. confusing me. Uh, yeah, we do actually have a power meter as well. I don't know what... Infinite power. That leads to... I'm also glad we're going this direction because we get to dissolve yet another edict, I guess. Here, I'll camp here. 
Well, at this point, you've dissolved storms? Uh, just two. Three spires, two edicts. Okay. Effigies up there. So we have, eff yeah, we have effigy. There's yeah. something in the mountain spire. So I think I'm going to head for the mountain spire. I don't know what we're going to run into there, but for whatever reason, it's lit up. Poof, they have something for you. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe a character is like, I demand that you take me with you to the library. I mean, uh, Lantry. Well, I mean, we got Lantry, and I'm just going to keep Lantry in the party. I like Lantry. Oh, hey, missive. Okay, my dear fate binder. It's a poorly kept secret that Bleeding Mark's job is more about killing threats before they become a problem. Official executions are really the minority of his duties. As I understand it, Kairos has long used Bleeding Mark as a preventative measure. Since he can move about the world rather freely, he can evade all but the most absurd powers. He's the perfect predator to send against wild talents. I'm sure a few in the tiers have ever actively wondered why there have been seemingly so few Archons born this far west. I'm sure folks with the potential to be Archons have occurred in the tiers time and time again, but they're usually cut down by the mark before the world hears of them. It's likely safe to assume Bleedon Mark has his eye on you and has orders to use his own judgment as to when to strike. I've known the old man for ages, and I'd strongly encourage you not try to appeal to him with overt displays of loyalty. He has no stomach for psychopaths. I sincerely believe that he thinks every human being is a selfish, twisted knave, and there are those who are lying about it, and those that accept that they are what they are. No third type exists. So yes, I do think Bleed and Mark will one day have to come for you. As I said, you could always hide or end your life now. But where you're headed, conflict is likely inevitable. Neothis. Alright, uh... Archons, how they've risen to power. Okay. My, uh, dear Myothis, I appreciate the insight and I'm honored by your vote of confidence. Your missive made mention of Graven Ash and how you've known of him since before he wore the title Archon of War. Can you tell me more of what you observed of his rise to power? If I'm indeed an Archon, it's safe to say I wasn't born knowing that I can't, uh, what I can or can't do. And it stands to reason I might learn something from the stories of the other Archons. Dude, send it. Yes. Okay. Uh, so what's the, what am I doing here? Oh, training. Well, training's always important. Uh, you know what? I'm going to teach these two how to dodge. Uh, I'm actually going to go uh, get training in lore, I think. Mm -hmm. So what do the other people have for you? Okay, this. So I got a guy that regularly makes weapons for us. And we also get food. Mm -hmm. And camping supplies, which... <laughs> uh, <laughs> you don't need much. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I want to get another spire so we can uh, build another thing. But we'll have to do that later. Well, you know what? Honestly... Oh, so the, there isn't a spire to the library. Oh. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, honestly... You can probably travel from the mountain spire to there, can't you? No, we, we, won't, we won't be able to travel here. We can't go to the... We can't go to Effigy. Though, it looks like it's fastest to actually go from this direction for okay. reasons. Anyway, I'm going to go back to the Ocean Spire for a short bit. Mainly, I'm going to be managing um, towers and inventory, which is stuff you're not interested in, and honestly, I'd prefer to keep out of YouTube anyway, because commentating over that stuff is a pain in the butt. So, uh, we'll next, next time. time.